guys? Well, welcome back to another video. We're just out here at Bamberg uh, County Airport in South Carolina getting some fuel. And I uh, thought I'd share a story with you guys. We are back taxiing right now uh, down runway 5, and there's a little turnaround at the end where we can do our run-up. And during the run-up is where we'll start our story. And Bamberg traffic, Mooney 2711 Whiskey, clear runway 5, holding short runway 5, Bamberg. Man, I can't see nothing with that sun in my eye. All right, guys, so here we are at the end of the taxiway, holding short runway 5, and we'll go over our run-up. I'll show you guys what happened. So, we'll run up, bring the mixture in a little bit, because I run it real lean on the ground, bring the power up to 1,700, we're right about there. First, check my fuel pressure, manifold pressure, RPMs are holding good, everything's in the green down here, and suction is good. Then I go two left, look for a drop, and there it is, two right, should recover where it was, yep, one left. Drop, should be about the same as the first one. Come back. That's good. And now I check my prop. And I do three cycles. There's one. Look for manifold pressure to move. It did. Here's two. Look for RPM to move this time. It did. And then we're going to watch our all pressure move here. Three. Okay, and it's right there. And I bring the power back. Is where I have my issue. So, when I pulled this prop back, it came back loose, went clunk, and then it jammed, and it did not move, and I had to cancel the entire flight that day. So, I'll go over uh, what the conditions of that day were, and um, what we ended up doing, what we ended up finding. So, let's get in the air first. So, final's clear, run-up's complete, uh, prop call ammeter was good, suction was good. Okay, prop, 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 and throttle, that's why I use checklists right there. Um, flight controls, free and correct, okay. Dual selector handles in the tank I want. Flaps are set for takeoff. Trim set for takeoff. Two places. Prop is full. All flaps are open. Power boost. Electronic fuel pump coming on. Strobe light, beacon. Uh, nav lights and landing lights. Yep. Seat belts are on. Doors closed. Windows are closed. Uh, retraction lever. We have clearance. Expect the engine to die on takeoff. When it does, I'm going to pitch forward and find a place to land with no hesitation. Um, and the halfway point, which, um, yeah, it should be at 50 miles an hour by the halfway point. I don't know if there's a good indicator down there, but if I'm not at 50 miles an hour, uh, when I glance back after checking those instruments, I'm usually at rotation speed, so I always know. If I look back here, I'm not at rotation speed. Something is off. I'm going to abort that takeoff, and I have plenty of time for that. Okay, so here we go. Bamberg traffic, Mooney 2711 Whiskey taking off runway 5, Bamberg. All right, make sure it's coming in. Alrighty. Final is clear. Okay, I apply to full power. Manifold pressure, fuel pressure are good. RPM look good. Engine instruments are on the green. Airspeed's alive. There's 60, 65. We're going to rotate. Nice and easy. Let her fly. Positive rate. Gear's coming up. Gear's up and locked. And we'll pitch forward. Good amount of right rudder here to keep her straight. Everything's looking good. Looking for 110 right here, and then we'll pitch, keep climbing, and speeding up to 120. Okay, there's 120, here's 500, flaps are coming up. Power's coming back, and props coming back. 1, 2, 3, 4, should be 7, 5, 6, and 7. And it is, and there it is, 2,500. Okay. And Bamberg traffic, Mooney 2711 Whiskey departing off the upwind for runway 5, straight out, last call, Bamberg. Lane lights can come off, boost button can come off. Uh, climb checklist in your closet. Uh, cuff flaps good, flaps are up, fuel pump is off, landing light is off, power boost open above, above 5,000. Alright, guys, so yeah, the other day um, was the first day that um, we were able to get the whole family in the plane. So I had my wife and my two young boys, uh, three and five years old, in the airplane with me. It was my wife's first time in this airplane, I'd flown with her before. And um, it was my youngest, my three-year-old's first time in an airplane ever. Anyway, um, we got the whole family in there, and that's a whole ordeal, right? You got to get car seats in here. You got to get them set up with the headsets and this and that. And they're little kids, so they're dad this, dad that, you know. And you need to focus when you're flying an airplane. Um, so it's already stressful, right? and I knew that. And that's why I waited so long to get my three-year-old in the airplane because I wanted to make sure that you know he could handle it. Anyway, it's a whole ordeal to get him in the plane, and it's hot, right? We get the whole family in the plane, and to get the plane started up, taxi over to fuel, and, you know, we fill up with fuel and everything like that. 
Um, at this point, you've been in the airport for however long. I mean, you can imagine. Everyone's getting anxious. Everyone wants to fly. We have a short flight planned anyway um, just to get uh, my youngest, Charlie, used to the airplane because we're planning a trip to Chicago and we wanted to make sure that he could handle the plane. So we go over run up. I do that whole run-up procedure you just saw, except when I grabbed the prop and went to cycle it. On the first cycle, I pulled back. I had a little resistance, and then it went loose and came and snapped all the way back. I never felt that before, but my immediate thought was, okay, the cable snapped. But then when I went to push it back in, it got jammed. I was like, okay. And I tried to twist it. Nothing happened. I was like, all right, regardless of if I figured this out at this point, we are done flying today. My wife was like, are you kidding me? I'm like, I'm not kidding you. Like, that's, that's, it was just a very simple decision for me. It was like, look, I know we've done all this work to get in the plane. I know it's a huge deal to get in here, and we've been planning this. And the whole day is basically shot now. I was like, well, there is no way in hell I'm taking this family up on this plane even if we figure this out today, even if, like, I were to get out and it was like, oh, this happened, I'm like, no, that's enough for me. But, you know, that's like, I, I don't know, I don't take it as a sign or anything, but it's just, everything's got to go good um, for me to, to, to fly and then also for me to, especially for me to take my family up. So I get out of the plane and, you know, people come over and start helping me. We troubleshoot. Ended up finding out that the ball joint at the end of the prop cable, um, there's like a little set screw that's in there. The set screw fell out, which allowed the ball joint to come loose. I'll overlay a picture right here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But it came loose. Um, it looked like that set screw had been gone for a while because I could not find it in the belly pan. I couldn't find it anywhere. Um, so I think that that set screw came out a while ago, and it was just an accident waiting to happen. And we just got lucky that it happened at my home airport um, before I'd even took off, right? Now, people are asking me what, what, uh, what would have happened if it happened in the air. When, when that cable breaks, the prop governor has a spring on it, and the spring goes to full. So the prop just would have effectively went to full throttle, or full RPM rather, and the prop would have went up and I would have heard the engine speed up. At which point, you can just bring back the power and limp home basically really slow. So it's not a catastrophic failure. Um, it's definitely a mission disabling failure. Like if I was on a cross country, I couldn't, I couldn't continue without control of my propeller. Um, number one, because you need to be able to control your RPM. You don't want to be at a high RPM for too long, only on takeoff. Um, and landing, but at landing your RPM is not high because you're actually you're controlling the, pro the propeller with your with your uh, manifold pressure at that time. You know, it, I, I do my run up every time. I do my checklists every time, anyways. But it's just a good reminder on why we do those, on why we do run ups, why we do checklists, why we why I take the time to look over the airplane, do good pre flights. You know, I stick my head under the cowling whenever I can and look at things, get used to the way things look, and then you know, if anything changes, then I know that something has changed, right? It's really important to spend a lot of time around the airplane. Um, if, you know, if you can help your mechanic do things with it, that's even better. Yeah, that's my two cents. Like I said, nothing catastrophic. Um, nothing really too too scary, but what do they say, right? Time to spare, go by air. So this, this kind of thing happens in general aviation, and you got to be cool with it. You, you don't want to push it. You don't want to have that get the rightest mentality. And, yeah, it's just important. So that leads us into my next story. Hopefully the camera batteries last here. But the next story is a story about me flying by myself in this plane. I had a case of get there itis, and it bit me, and it was the scariest moment in my general aviation career. So, yeah, this other, this other story here starts at me just wanting to fly really bad, which is never a good thing. Um, but I checked the weather. The weather said... Good for flying in the morning, bad for flying in the afternoon. But the bad for flying in the afternoon wasn't supposed to hit until, like, late afternoon. So I was going for an early morning flight, and I figured I'll be fine, um, you know, to fly in the morning. And I was actually headed out to Daniel Field to get some cheap gas. And what ended up, what ended up happening was I flew out to Daniel Field, which is only a 47-minute flight. But something I'm not used to in this airplane yet is that 47-minute flight in this airplane... I mean, you're, you're far from home. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're you're away. So, I, it wasn't something I thought about. I was like, oh, 47 minutes. You know, the Cessna, 47 minutes, it's a local flight. Anyway, I'm flying to Daniel Field. I get to Daniel Field, and it socked in. All right, there's this local cloud layer, and I can see, uh, like, underneath it from the side. But then when you get over, there's just no way to get to the field. And then I start hearing everybody that's going into Daniel Field shooting our nav approaches into that field. I say, okay, no problem. I'm not going to go there. I'm going to divert. So I diverted back to Bamberg County, the airport that I just left from. Uh, only thing was is now I'm getting to the point where I wasn't fuel critical yet, but I was um, 
was at the point where I, I needed to get fuel. I wanted fuel. I had, I think, eight gallons in one one tank, or six gallons in one tank, and like five in the other. So I'm like at ten or ten in the other. I was like ten to fifteen gallons, whatever. I was. I remember thinking I was much lower than I like to be, especially this far from home when I don't have a plan. So I didn't have a. That was that was problem number two. Problem number one was I flew too far from home. Um, on a day where the weather was scheduled to be bad in the afternoon. And number two, I didn't have a backup plan for when I got the Daniel if it was socked in, which it wasn't forecasted to be, but still, should have had a plan. Okay, so get out there, socked in, turn back, and it just starts closing in underneath me faster than I've ever seen, right? So it's starting to get patchy, and then scattered, and then, you know, broken, scattered, and then it's just like an overcast, and I'm like, shit. And I'm, I'm, looking, I'm, reading, I'm looking at the weather, and it says clear back home back home is far away and um, I had I had my out in sight I could have landed at this airport and my thought was I can land there but then I'm gonna be stuck there and I don't want to be stuck so I'm gonna try to climb over this giant cloud layer that I'm already over I'm gonna go up over this next big ridge and I bet I can see further and I bet it's clear on the other side just horrible decision making I don't talking about this is almost embarrassing why would I even think that when I had a place to land right there so I flew away from that place to land went cl wasted gas climbing all the way up here I had to climb to 7,500 feet to look over this cloud and I look and it is just a sea of white and developing clouds and I'm like shit so then I turn back and now it's a sea of white behind me and I can't freaking see the ground anymore um, and I'm you know my heart rate is starting pumping uh, you know you get that adrenaline rush and I'm thinking myself what the hell am I thinking I have no idea like where I'm gonna go now and I never started getting like really just really nervous um, and I felt I felt scared for the first time in my aviation career like really scared and you know my fuel is getting low I'm like where am I gonna go I can't see any airports I can see really far away that it might be clear that way um, but if I fly out that way and it's not clear then I'm out of gas then I then I am fuel critical so that's the decision I'm, I'm tasked with tasked with at this point, and it's scaring the hell out of me. So, anyway, I'm flying. I I I, I calm myself down. I said, "Look, if I keep freaking out, I'm definitely not going to get out of this problem, and something bad's going to happen." So, so the airplane's still flying, the engine's still running. Um, you know, at at the most, I want to get in trouble. That was what I was thinking. I was like, "I'm okay with getting in trouble, but I want to live. That's the main goal, right? Survive this, and don't don't worry about getting in trouble." So I'm like, if I have to call ATC and try to get, um, you know, pop-up VFR or IFR clearance or shoot an approach into an airport, that's what I'm going to do. And so that's what I did. I loaded an RNAV approach into, uh, I think it was Bamberg Airport, and I was like, look, you know what, I'll, I'll call ATC and I will tell them the situation, and then I'll deal with the consequences later, and I'll live through it. Now, I'm in my IFR training. I've, you know, I'm, no, I'm by no means proficient. I, I know how to fly an RNAV um, in theory. I've done it a couple times with an instructor, and I do it all the time in the simulator. So the process of it, I'm aware of, but I've you know never done it, especially in actual IMC conditions. But again, I'm thinking, look, prepare for that, because that might be my only bet. Right? It's better than running out of fuel above the clouds. So that was my thought. All right, so I load an RNAV approach, and I'm, um, I'm going to the first waypoint of the RNAV, and I see a hole, and I'm like, oh my god, there's a hole. And it's big enough for me to get through. So I'm like, thank God. So, But it's low. I can see the ground right below the hole. I'm like, shit, that's low. I'm going to go down there and check it out. So I go down there. I look at it. I say, okay, that looks like it's about 600 feet. That's what the weather was reporting at the airport. So I'm like, I'm going to trust that. So I go. I dip through this hole, and I pop out underneath, and sure shit, I mean, it's at like 600 feet at the most. And, you know, so now I'm fighting this, like, am I flying legally? Am I 500 feet away from the nearest thing? But I'm I'm also not, not worried about it at that, at that point, right? I'm happy that I'm below the clouds. I can see forever. Uh, I just got to fly low. And I know the area I'm in is all trees. So I'm not by any people. There's no antenna by me. Um, and I know, okay, worst case, I got to fly low over some trees, which is dangerous, but, you know, lesser of many evils at this point. So I basically scud run this plane all the way to Bamberg. I couldn't even see the Bamberg because it was behind trees until, you know, I was right up on it. And, um... Luckily, I get out. Uh, I get to Bamberg. I can see. I can see the runway. I was using for flight my GPS, all the tools I had at my disposal to find the airport. Found the airport. Land.
end of the plane, oh my god, I, I just, even talking about this, I feel the sigh of relief. I'm like, okay, I'm here, made it, and I'm you know, pissed at myself for making these decisions that led to that. I'm, you know, I'm like, why, what the hell just happened? That could have ended so much worse. I don't know if it's getting through in the story, but it was, it was bad. You know, it was a bad situation. Got there, fueled up, and I parked the plane. And I was like, you know what, I'm not even going to sit here and wait for it to potentially clear up later. I'm shaking. I'm not my best self right now. I'm not, I'm not in a good mind, a headspace. I'm not even going to mess with this. So, I called my parents who, luckily, my parents only live like an hour and ten minutes away from that airport. So, I called them. I was like, look guys, I hate to bug you, but I'm stuck. And I need help. And of course, they were on our way. You know, they were so happy to help. But, um, damn, was that a, a learning experience. So, looking back on it, you know, what could I have done better? First of all, I mean, the weather that day was, like I said earlier, was scheduled to get bad, but it was scheduled to get like that way, way in the afternoon. I mean, I looked at all the imagery, all the cloud coverage reports, things like that. It wasn't supposed to get that way until uh, much later. So that moved up really fast. So the weather closed in on me. But looking back on it, I shouldn't have even waited for that. Or, or I, I should have stayed closer to home with that in the forecast. Now I know that, right? If there is deteriorating weather conditions later on in the forecast, stay close to the airport. I could have stayed stayed local, flown over the lake, done some pattern work, putted around, just built some hours enjoying flying rather than trying to fly somewhere to get cheap fuel. And that's what I should have done. So now, now I'm like a hawk for this. I look at the weather and if, if, it's, if it's looking like it's going to get bad later on in the day, I don't plan a flight 45 minutes away. Forget it. I don't. I just don't even do it. Um, so, you know, huge learning experience for me. Like I said, but at the same time, I don't like having. I don't want learning experiences like that in aviation. That was something I could have avoided with better preparation. I guess it was a lesson I didn't have to learn that way. I think is the best way to put it. So, you know, I I don't I don't fly casually. I fly frequently. And when I'm not flying, I'm studying. So I'm studying for my IFR. I'm, I'm consuming, you know, YouTube content on, on, you know, AP, what is it, APQ, AQP, whatever the acronym is. Basically advanced training, things like that. I'm always trying to learn more. That's, that's my whole life. It's all I think about is aviation. It's all I want to do. And so I'm not casual about it. So I'm already doing, you know, as much as I can to, uh, you know, learn when I can outside of just flying an airplane, but I could be doing better. That's that's what it says about me. So, um, yeah, maybe this, this story opens someone else's eyes. I, I don't know if there's any, you know, pilots out, out there that watch my content that are a little bit too casual with the weather or haven't been bitten yet. You know, I, I, it's the first time it bit me in, you know, a year and a half of flying, and you know, I've been flying paramotors for six six years, and I've, I've been caught in some inclement weather with that. So if you guys learn anything from this, just, um, you know, be cautious. Learn from, from that mistake, and that's how, how we do it in aviation, right? Learn from other people's mistakes so we don't make that same mistake. And you know, if we can if we can learn from a mistake where somebody doesn't die, um, I think that's that's the best, obviously, right? So I get the feeling that I'm babbling on here, and this video is going a little bit long. But um, hope you guys enjoyed that one. Uh, like I said, it was a hell of a learning experience for me. Uh, I did not enjoy that flight, but. Uh, I enjoy sharing it with you guys, that's for sure. Um, if you guys like it, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram, um, all that jazz. And, um, yeah, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.